All right, welcome to my second Modern Street Hemi shootout race of the 2022 season. We are here at Rockingham Dragway in Rockingham, North Carolina. It was raining this morning, but they're doing a late start today. They said earlier they're starting racing at 1. I don't know if it's going to get delayed. There's still some grain clouds around, so who knows what'll happen there. It's a two-day deal, so whatever, you know, if we don't get in too much racing today, tomorrow's looking better weather-wise, so we'll fit it all in tomorrow. So I'm just kind of getting a layout of the land here as usual because I've never been in this track before. The staging lanes is offset from the track as you can see a little bit. But man, I wonder how old this track is because look at those. Man, those are old. This place has been here a long time, that's for sure. All right, can't wait to go down it though. Feel old must mean like legacy, like historic. I need to look up the history of this place. I would think it might have a pretty cool history. Anyway, let me see if I can't knock out this driver's face and, and cover questions that you have. We're looking about an hour to start. Alright, we're here in the staging lanes. Tech they did at the driver's meeting, literally just taking everyone's tech cards. So what they're going to try to do today Saturday, because of the unknown weather conditions, they said they want to try and get all the way through bracket, all the way to the winner today, plus the qualifications for all the index classes for tomorrow. And then tomorrow, run eliminations for all the index classes. So just kind of show you where we're at. The track is right there. There's a tower, walkway, obviously staging lanes. That's the entrance road right there. And that's like the main roadway over there. That's actually Rockingham Speedway, oval track. Well, it's been a long wait for our first run. Apparently the track had some electronics issues with the timing system. I don't know what was going on, but we were standing there for quite a while. And now you see the little devil's tears here so i'm hoping this is light enough there you know we can still go okay here we go Okay, here we go. Thank you. 117 reaction time, not great, but you know, first run day. 167, 60 foot, that's good. I mean, that's okay. DA, I think is like 2300. I'll have to check the DA here in just a second. 1141 at 117. Considering the DA, that's good. But more importantly, I'm running the 11.5 class. So that puts me where I need to be. Car was very well cooled down, obviously. But I don't know, what do you guys, did you guys, did any of that pick up on the uh, camera, my launch? I don't know, some just felt, it felt kind of mushy to me. 
that's the best way I can describe it. It felt mush. Okay, so that first one was first time trial for bracket. Now they're just going through the time trial or qualifying for the other classes. So this is going to be 11-5 qualifying. Number one, I'm going to go up against this uh, Hellcat Durango here. And since I ran 11.41 at last time, I'm going to put my engine trans in norm to avoid any shifting issues and see what happens. Hopefully, if this slows me down, it'll put me right at 11.5. I'm hoping. Okay, foot break to 2,000. time that time than the first round but i guess i didn't because it was a 213 so 166 so a better 60 foot a 734 eighth mile whereas the first run what i have 732 so i was a little slower going through the eighth on that run and you see my mile per hour ended at 99 so i would have definitely won that even though he had a faster uh, et my reaction time beat him i beat him to the line and i played that perfect so were that eliminations i would have done good Time trial number two for bracket. I'm going against SRT Addicts over here. They warned me he's gonna try deep stage in here. Drag boat is on. And again, as you can see, we're leaving engine trans and norm. That was not a good burnout. going on here yeah this slip is all screwed up the reaction time might have been right there the car number is wrong 60 foot 338 all says 742 thousand says 742 what the hell is up with that i think that was the eighth i don't know quarter 1156 at 116 i need to talk to this uh srt addicts dude and see what happened on his slip all right we're going for the second qualification for 11.5 i'm going against guy dalton so this would be good practice run against him. Unfortunately, you're not going to get many wins against him, so I'd rather have it come during eliminations and not during a qualifying round. Or about to hot lap it too, because they're already told Bracket to go on standby. Oh man, what am I going to do? Thank yep. you. Okay, so I went 0.044. So good reaction time, but that's because I accidentally deep staged. With 1171, I scrubbed nine miles an hour off. 179. That 60 foot is pretty crappy. Wonder what fell off on that. Well, probably because I deep staged it, that affected that 60 foot. So I didn't have that rollout. Oh man, what do I dial? I screwed myself. Obviously, with 1171, I should have kept going. All right, decisions, decisions. All right, we're going for first round of bracket class. 
I dialed 11.56. I'm going against this orange challenger. He dialed 11.40. So I like the fact that I'm a little slower. So that means I'll take off first. You know, the chance of him red lighting is a little greater because my light's going to go off first. We both broke out, but I ran 1154 on 1156 dial. He hit 1130 on an 1140. So my dialing was almost there, dude. I was only 13 thousandths off on my dial. Point oh, oh, my reaction time wasn't as bad as I thought. You dumped on me, didn't you? No. <laughs> you didn't dump? I dumped hard. I dumped hard. I like, oh, you dumped no. Well, because I saw you starting to pull up on me because I was getting ready to, but you started catching up, so I just kept going. Uh, I dumped, and I was like, he dumped on me, damn it. Right, nope. <laughs> Good job, bro. Good job. Yeah, thank you. All right, so after that exciting win, it pretty much just started sprinkling right away. I don't know if you can see. It's sunny and sprinkling, and obviously that is after that mishap happened earlier they are uh not taking chances that yeah this is everything's completely wet and this is coming down good so they got to wait till this stops coming down and then dry it we may be paused for a while it is 6 47 local time here we're eastern time if it stops raining right now we should be able they should be able to dry the track and and get in another round it's literally just been like cloudy all day a little bit of sun and then there's just this random rain cloud that just comes through every now and then i guess that's north carolina huh but before we go we got us a rainbow that's a pretty i mean that's like the entire rainbow i rarely ever see that that's pretty All cool right. they started back up after a rain delay Just gonna give you a little bonus footage here. Uh, they're finishing up the rest of the round one brackets and then they have like Outlaw 850. And then we'll be back for round two of brackets once we get to it. Hey, should I be running no hood like this guy? What do you guys think? Drop another 20 pounds or You guys didn't hear that because I have a recording, but he just announced that car 1156 has a wait and see by, and guess who's car 1156? That would be me, so that's pretty cool. So wait and see by just means, as of right now, I have a buy, but if like somebody else doesn't show up or something happens where it ends up still being an even number of cars, then I will run somebody. But if everyone shows up that's supposed to be in there, I got the buy. Okay, so y'all were just how they prep the check. Got the tractor with the rubber wheels there. Dude spraying it down, which pretty much the alleys do right before they run the fastest class. They obviously need the best prep. So uh, normally they run all their classes and then re-prep before the fast class. More bonus coverage in the Black Challenger there. That is the deuce. That is Mr. Dan Van Horn, who pretty much runs this whole thing. So. Generally, you saw the car backfire at about 7 
All right, well, we got another pause in the action, so after stuff like that, they always have to go check the track, and they found oil at the end of the track and all the way down the return road, so they got to clean that up. Almost about missed it, so it was a pretty simple oil cleanup. They're already done, and Grumpy Cat is about to go. He is the record Hellcat, even though there's not much Hellcat left in the Hellcat. Kind of like this taller view here. All right. Yeah, I watched him run like a 6.99 at 1.99 at Mo Party last year, and then he's broken at 200 mile per hour barrier since then. Okay, so I've got the wait and see by right now. It looks like I'm waiting and I'm seeing what looks like a buy. We won't know for sure till we get out there, but no matter what, I'm still gonna run it because the car sat for a while and I have no idea what to dial in. The A's gone down about 2100, but it's cooler. Temp is cooler. Last time I dialed 1156, I broke out the 1154. That's not thinking with the cooler air, it's, it's sitting for a while. So I dialed 1144. But if I have the buy, I'm gonna do the run. It's a free run, no matter if I break out or not. But I'm definitely doing it because you also usually with the buy of a chance opportunity if you want to all you have to do is go up break the beams and back out and you don't have to make the run but for me that'd be stupid because I need to know what kind of time I'm running for the next round all right so since this is also a buy I'm gonna go ahead and go in the right lane because somehow in my previous five runs I've only been in the left lane I got the win. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Oh yeah, I think, ah, again, I have no light in here. I think that just said 11.37. I had a 0 .085 reaction time, 163, 60 foot, 725 eighth. Yep, 11.37 at 119. So cooler air, I'm running a lot faster. So I'm gonna have to adjust my dial in. All right, so this is just after the buy that I just did. I got out, I'm like, right, I'm gonna open up my hood and oops. I never put my hood pins on. I'm surprised they didn't catch that at the starting line. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to try not, that's the first time I've ever done, actually, no, I'm sorry. That's the second time I've ever done it. First time the guy at the starting line saw it and he actually threw them on for me. So I think that was in Houston. And by the way, I don't know what kind of rain you guys got here in North Carolina, but holy crap, my car is spotted with like just spots. Like they look like hard water spots, like the kind you would get with hard water from bad tap water. Oh, there you go. Can you see that? Look at that. That's from the rain. Like, what kind of rain is coming down here in North Carolina? Like, I had to wipe down my window, my windshield, because it was so bad. Like, man. Okay, anyway, enough ranting. Let me uh, wait. Uh, they're probably going to, we're going to start hot lapping kind of pretty soon, so. All right, third round bracket. I'm going up against this maroon Hellcat Charger. He dialed 1025. I went with 1138 because I ran 1137 the last time and I'm practically hot lapping it here. in that one so I went with the right lane because even though I only been in right lane one time before but that was my best time of the weekend this was hard because he's a, over a full second faster than me so I was you know I'm learned from my mistakes I did not even though I, I wanted to slow down earlier I was like nope he's a hell yeah he's gonna catch up I'm gonna keep going and I waited till last second where I felt comfortable and I got the win thank you there you go thank you Okay, I just came back around back of the staging lanes because I know I'm going to have to go in here anyway, so let me turn the engine off here. 
Okay, so I had a 0.078 reaction time. Oh, he had 0.47. I had four tenths on him. He ran a 10.22 on a 10.25, so he broke out. So I would have won. But I did slam the brakes at the end. I don't know how by how much, but I ran 11.52 at 107. So I scrubbed like 12 miles an hour. I'm going to keep my 11.38 dial in for now. All right, a little precursor after that last round win. We are down That's to right. round four. one, yeah. two, three, four. Something like that. Bracket. So there's actually just five of us left. Four right there. And Ron, he looks like he's got the buy in this round. I'm going up against this Magnum RT, Mr. Stellan with MSHS. He looks like he dialed around 12 no, 1255. So this will be interesting. So of all the brackets I've done and all of my races so far, I've always gone up against faster cars, which means I've always been the first one to take off. This time, I have to wait. I'm the second one to take off. at the end and I got it I got it that means I am in the semifinals so we'll have three cars somebody's gonna get the buy into the finals thank you 1156 that was with me hitting the brakes so I don't know how I would have done on the dial but he ran like a 1264 yeah 1264 my reaction time was it looks like 0 0.104 honestly I, I'm, I'm happy with that reaction time just because I really was worried because I knew he was taking off first. So I was like, had to focus on my light, my light only. That was gonna wait to be like 100% sure. So not just like normally I'd be like, okay, as soon as I see the amber flicker, go. This time I was like, okay, just wait for it to be solid to make sure that you're good and it's your light and not his. So we're on to the semifinals. They told us to literally just loop back around. So that is what I am doing. All right, so looks like this is the final three for bracket, me. Ron Polidoro, who I raced in the final of King of the Hill in Orlando, and White Demon Powered Drag Pack. I'm not sure what kind of car that is, so I have no idea. One of us is obviously going to get the buy. I had the second round buy. He just had this last buy, so I only pulled up. He was waiting here because he, I think, he just went, broke the beams, and backed right back up. And he was the last one. Oh, I guess if you go by, you know, don't let people who already got by get a buy, then technically he should get the buy, which would mean it would be me and Ron, which would be a very, 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 very tough race. But we'll see, so I will be back when I find out. All right, here we go. So just like I thought, White Challenger had the buy, which means I'm going up against Ron. So I'm taking off first. Oh boy, all right. We're nervous because I got to cut a good reaction light. That's like, what do you call it? Sweet justice or something like that. Because considering the last time I went up against him, he red lit, giving me the win. So this time I gave him the win. That was just, I mean, that was just pure nerves. That's all it was. Just nerves. I had a good run. So close. <laughs> well, that's weird. My tire light came on for the first time in a long time. Let's see what we got. Negative 0 0.035. What do we run? Oh my, I would have broke out. Actually, we both would have broke out. I hate looking at the slip because he had a 0 0.2 reaction time, although me jumping probably, he probably didn't care. So I can't say I would have won because 
he could have ran a better reaction time had he not seen my red light come on. All right, so I'm gonna show you the bracket final. I just went up, talked to Ron, congratulated him, said, I was like, all right, we're even on the red lights because he, he gave me the red light last time and this time I gave it to him. So next time we face each other, I'm like, no red lights. Let's make it a good race. But, and that would have been, but he, yeah, he, he said exactly what I thought. He said he was waiting for full yellow and he was being cautious on that. I and mean, especially once he saw my red come on, he just took it easy. Uh, I gotta get better at just letting things go, but it's so hard because I could be up there right now. Them, but man, what could have been, right? Call it a night in my new rear mattress and see y'all tomorrow for the 11 5 learning for day two of Modern Street Hemi Shootout at Rockingham Dragway in Rockingham, North Carolina. I am here in the morning because as usual, as you see in most of my other videos, I just sleep at the track. And But this time, a little bit more comfortable. No enclosed trailer, so I don't have that. But what I did get, there's this cool mattress that goes in the back seat of trucks. It's got this little part that kind of goes over the hump and this fills up the full width from the seat to here. And I mentioned things like this and me sleeping in a trailer in the truck for a couple reasons. It's not, you know, be like, oh man, look at what I'm doing. It's more like to give people ideas for ways to go to the track if say you need to be budget conscious like what if you can't afford to stay in hotels and you need to cut money so what are different ways to do that well you can sleep a track this is something i when i drag raced 20 years ago before i took my really long break before i got my 1320 i didn't know that i didn't know you could literally sleep at the track i didn't know about the whole rv thing what some people here did is now they have uh, companies where people rent rvs and they'll actually come and set it up for you wherever it is and they'll let you do it here in orlando you saw i rented an enclosed trailer had a twin air mattress put it in front that's where i slept there but an enclosed trailer is more expensive to rent if you don't have one than an open trailer this is the cheapest option for a vehicle trailer you can get by the way the u-haul plus it's better mileage on your tow vehicle because better aerodynamics, you don't have a big box you're pulling through the air. You can make it as cheap as possible. All I have to pay for is gas, which is gas module with this, towing a U-Haul with my light car. And aerodynamics actually is not bad. It's pretty, pretty decent. U-Haul, I think for three days is like 210 bucks, or four days, like 210. For three days, it would have been like 160. And then entrance for the track and that's it oh and stay here overnight they don't charge you for it not here not so far than the tracks i've done it at have all right with that said i'm pretty much where i mean it's i think it's like eight o'clock a.m see you when we're getting ready to race Let's do one more qualification for 11 5 i'm going up against guy dalton again which is always a good race so i kind of like this one because we're always close but yeah i don't know why my tire light is on it's a service tire pressure says it hasn't been on since last like summer august september so i don't know why these cars do that so I kind of wanted to do good and I no longer need to dial for bracket because that's over that's done that's yesterday so this time I'm fine just actually racing which I kind of made that decision a little bit late <laughs> so I probably should have hit the brakes a little earlier no it was still a good run good morning. thank you good morning 
my reaction time was not good 185 at a 163 60 foot 726 8 so that's good end up with 1148 at 105 i actually would have lost that round because i would have broke out i'm okay with that because number one qualifying but number two i actually had plenty of room to break and i knew i did and like i said i decided last second to just break had that been eliminations i would have definitely braked a little bit sooner overall pretty good other than my reaction time still gotta work on that that's gonna be my killer Okay, we got round one eliminations of 11-5 class. I think there's 10, maybe 11 cars in the class. I'm going up against this silver scat right here. He qualified fifth. I qualified eighth. So he has lane choice. He picked the left lane, which I'm okay with. And he said it will be a good race, so I, I think we will be. We were talking a little bit beforehand. Cool guy. Uh, also another Chris. All right, and really quick, before I continue with this race, big, big shout out to Mike. Mike, you know who you are fellow air force guy and he brought me a coffee this morning continuing his streak when i'm sleeping the track someone brings me coffee every time which is awesome i actually met him yesterday was talking to him and he offered so i was like well that's the one thing i could use not knowing that the track actually had coffee still really cool thank you mike for that i really appreciate it and it was awesome talking to you hanging out with you all right let me get set for this race here we got everything recording let's see what happens here tree so i probably didn't have to slow down as much as i was but being i was been running fast in 11.5 i just didn't really want to risk it hopefully i keep seeing you today Oh wow, yeah, I didn't have to slow down hardly at all. I had a 12.09. Look at how much I slowed down. So I had a 165 reaction time, not great, but he had a 6.53. So I was like half a second ahead of him. All right, round two, 11.50 class. And we have some regulars who are always making rounds. Guy Dalt Dobbs, we already know about. The Furious Fuchsia Challenger, also very good. The Orange Challenger, I raced them and beat them in bracket yesterday. I heard that yellow Charger back there is really good. I raced her in Orlando and she actually won the Virginia race last month that I missed. And then hopefully this becomes a trend where I join this club of regulars. Okay, so we're about to go 11-5, second round, and it is a rematch from my bracket round yesterday. I'm going up against this Go Mango Hellcat again. See how we do today. I saw that because I saw you coming up. That looked like you slowed down a little, and I so I just stayed in it. Padded, padded, yeah. Padded. Uh, I usually do three, and I only did two. I said I gotta take the light. Really? He ain't gonna make it. Tenth breakout. You were 53, and I broke out. Oh, was it? Go ahead, boss. All right, appreciate it. Good run, man. So there you go, there you have it. That's what happens when you are a faster car than the index, is you have to slow down at the end. And we were neck and neck, but he said I had a 153. Oh, you know, I bet you he has his radio on and he heard the track radio. That's, that's how he knows. Yeah, he broke out by a full tenth. I did not give him much room, so I beat him on a tree. Not a good reaction time, 179, but he had a 278, so I had a tenth on him. At the eighth, we are pretty much, well, I was still ahead because of his reaction time, but the times were pretty much identical. So I finished with 11.52 at 114. That's a slow trap speed. I don't think I let off at all. 
I think I stayed in it, so. Okay, so quick update. We're about to go semifinals, Slim 5, and I got paired up against Mr. Guy Dalton again, so we have our rematch. Furious Fuchsia Challenger has the buy. So there's three of us, in, so I made the top three again. We're about to go up. They just ran 10-5, so we're actually next, but it's starting to rain a little bit, so I don't know if you can see the raindrops. After yesterday, we're probably gonna wait it out. Cause right now, if it stays like this, the track will get dry pretty quick. So. All right, it stopped sprinkling off. Everything looks like it dried off, so we're gonna send us down. Oh, he had the nitrous purge. trans and normal that's how rematches go i'm not gonna beat guy dalton every single time it was still a good race so i placed two semifinals so i'm gonna leave here with a little bit of money it's 75 payout for that and 125 on brackets 200 bucks of my money back plus two more plaques for my collection so that's good there you go. thank you oh my gosh i ran an 11 509 i lost it at the tree my one of my worst reaction times of the weekend well, I can't really blame the bad ship. Bad ship actually might have helped keep me from breaking out. I got treated on that one. I mean, let's talk about that. Look at that, 11.509 to 11.515. I mean, that is a damn good race. All right, so this is 11.5 finals. Like she was deep staging and then just rolled straight through and red light so guy dalton wins in a points race he's gonna overtake the number one spot okay so a little bonus coverage i keep talking about how good he is he wins everything look at this he's literally in the final for the king of the hill again the white shaker dialed a 12 -0 and ron dialed a 941 so he's taking off first Winning King of the Hill. Yeah, so I'm still in running for 11.5 points, but man, he makes it hard to be in a running for a King of Kings. All right, let's get to the war ceremony. Get my money. I think it's like what, 3.30 or something like that? 3.45? 3.35. We'll get it and have this done by 3.45. All right, so I got to give a bunch of a spiel here. So bear with me, and, and I, I hope you guys understand that there's a lot of moving parts of these events. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for Modern Street Hemi Shootout at the Rockingham. Have as good turnout as Orlando, but I did place third in two classes. So, hey, I'm going home with a little bit of money. So my plat collection is growing. Oh, these are small ones, but that's all right. I'm gaining experience. I'm learning. I'm getting better. But either way, we're definitely doing Topeka, Kansas next month. And hopefully we do good there and stay in a chase. And if so, then we're going to finish this series out. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you at the drag strip.